Welcome to Marble Making Your Shower Class. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? I thought I would start the class with the finish. I really wanted to show you what's possible and what you can achieve at your house and then walk you through the process that we're gonna go through in this class to create this very effect. I was really scared to do this. I was scared I wasn't gonna get the look that I wanted and I put it off for probably a month. And what I can tell you is the thing that got me over my fear and that's gonna help get you over yours and it really works in any situation in life where you're fearful is take action. Practice on a practice board. You'll build your confidence like I did and end up being able to create a shower that looks something like this. Then as far as how much time you need to devote to tackling this project, it's really not long at all. Depending on how big or small your shower is, if you have a tub or you have a full shower that goes up to the ceiling like I do, you need to allow one day for the marble veining and then one day for the glazing. Pretty simple, right? So then you need three more days of dry time and then you're done. So I would say, you know, give yourself a week to create this marble veining and before you can actually use the shower again because we wanna make sure everything's good and dry before we let any water touch our beautiful artwork. Because frankly, this is more art than science. So the next time you see me, we'll be practicing on the sample boards, and then the next phase, we'll be applying the marble veining to the shower itself. Then I'll talk you through everything at the end about dry times one more time, and about how you care for your shower to maintain this beautiful finish. All right, I'll see you in the next video. You're ready to get talking turkey? That's turkey feather, that is. As I promised, I would do a more close-up shot of exactly how I'm creating the marble veining in the shower and show you how that works and how my hand moves. So I'm actually using the glaze that I used in the shower and it's just the mixture with the porch and floor in stone mason gray and water. I recommend you definitely have something like this in your home if you don't have a picture. I actually was able to get this tile for free because it had a little chip in it. So you can always run over to your local home improvement store, whether it be Home Depot or Lowe's, and ask them if they have any chip samples and something that you like as a reference. I mean, literally the scale of some of my veins were this big in the shower once I got finished with them. So just wanted to show you that as a reference point too. The other thing is we're gonna be blending in with a nice um, flat bristle brush. You can use a regular paintbrush. Um, I like these just because I feel like they're easier to hold and can control and are small. So I have more ability to go into the little areas that I want to with the marble veining and change it. So I'm going to start with the turkey feather and I'm going to dip it into the glaze. Then I'm going to blot it off on my rag. Okay, so I've dipped it in the glaze and I'm just blotting it off on my rag just to get the excess off. Then I kind of like to create a little tip with the feather just so when I get started, it's ready to go. So everything that we're going to be doing is with our wrist. So I'm just going to start up here because this is just a sample board. And you can see you just kind of twist and turn and lay down and drag. And you can see how the turkey feather creates nice little veins without a lot of effort. Okay, so you just pick up, you can lay your turkey feather down, you can drag it over and see how cool of effect that is. And then you just pick it back up. Then because some of this veining just started naturally, you can go ahead and very gently, see I'm turning my wrist, I'm not doing squiggle marks. You can connect those two lines and then bring it back through. Then what I like to do is when I had some little areas like this that I would just take my turkey feather and just connect things and make sure everything's flowing because in nature, that's how marbling is. So now you can start over here and you see how I'm just laying my turkey feather down. Now, if I want to do a really thick vein, I literally was taking my turkey feather and running it across like this and then picking it back up and see how that creates a really cool effect. 
Now, we don't want it to look like this, so it's important to go ahead and tap all of this in so we don't see where the turkey feather was. That's the goal. You don't want to see the tool that created the marble veining. Okay. Now this is a little harder because this is wall paint, <laughs> but it's what I had handy. Now to make more emphasis, you can lay your turkey feather down. You can see I've gotten no more. I haven't gotten any more glaze and you can just lay it down and tap it. Then because I just did that, I'm just going to move my wrist. So you just kind of move your wrist in different directions to create veining. So let's start over here and I'm going to dip my turkey feather again. Start with your, you always start with your wrist up really high and we're going to do some thin veining. And you just drag your turkey feather along and let your wrist do the movements. See how just some cool effects just naturally start to happen. So I'm just going to kind of keep going with this just so you can see what a thinner vein looks like. See, I'm not squiggling. I'm just gently turning the turkey feather. Now there's a natural break here that I want to connect like it happened in nature. And then I'm going to take that off to the side. So you see, if I'm doing the thinner veining, I'm only using the tip of the turkey feather and I'm not squiggling, I'm dragging. If you're doing thin veins and you don't want to pounce them in, you don't have to, but I feel like right here is a little bit heavy. So I'm going to pound that in just a tiny little bit. And remember, we are always going over this with glazing. Interesting. Every time you dip your turkey feather, you're just going to get a new effect. If you want to pull your turkey feather apart after you dip it and blot it off, you can. And that will create even more just simple veins. So let's say we want to do um, a thick point through here. You can always drag it through and flip your turkey feather over and then pick it up and then run it through. And then I'm gonna reconnect this. So you see how light these are because I really took a lot of the paint off and then I'm gonna lay my turkey feather down and look, that created a whole nother thing. All right, so I hope that helps show you how to use your turkey feather and the different effects overglazing. So the overglazing is the original color that's underneath. So this is the white mixture. So I just dip it in the glaze. I'm gonna dip it again. And it drip a little bit onto a rag. And this would be the second coat of glaze. And you see how much that is setting everything back as I go over it. Here I flipped the board around to go over again this heavy patch that I did. And you can see it wasn't very pretty initially. But when we do this over glaze, it adds a whole nother thing to it. So this will be the second coat of glaze. And you're going to pat off some of that glaze with your rag. And see, that creates a whole nother dimension to it as well. Now say, oh, I feel like I took too much glaze off. You just add some more back over the top. And the longer you let the glaze sit, the more coverage you're going to get. Okay, and make sure you make it like a pad like this and tap off. And just go ahead and tap off that glaze. Have fun at your house with that turkey feather. Let the turkey feather do the talking. It really does guide you to where that next little break and vein should be. So now let's talk about the pattern that I am working to create at my home. And if you saw my shower, you would like to create at your home. And that is something similar to what a marble slab would look like. So I'm looking for big dramatic veins, not doing individual veins on individual tiles. So I'm going to go grab my inspiration piece and I'll show you that next. So here's my inspiration piece. I just printed it out on a piece of paper. I'm going to keep this handy. I suggest you have something similar with you to have handy. 
to refer to so you can pay attention to the way you want the marble veining to go within your shower. Why I like this is it showed me a three-dimensional dimen view, which is exactly how my shower is set up. So I've got the walls on each side and then a flat panel on the back. Where my life gets a little challenging and most people probably don't have a window in their shower is I'm gonna have to keep the veining consistent starting up before the window and then finish off after the window. The one place I didn't tape or do anything around was the shower faucet handle and also the shower faucet itself. Any paint that may drip or get on those things are going to be easily cleaned up with a baby wipe later, so don't worry about that. And then when I can get to a point where I can do some close-in shots and show you exactly what I'm doing in the shower, I promise I will. Now this is going to be our first layer. So the marble veining is going to be our first layer and then we're going to follow up Tomorrow, I'm gonna to let this dry overnight. We'll follow up with what goes over the top and then we'll be finished. So this is gonna be a pretty easy project and I think it's gonna be really dramatic. I played around with the different mixtures of paint to water ratio. So we are gonna be mixing fortune floor paint in a pretty gray color with water. And so what I found was the best combination was 25% paint to 75% water. Then I ended up mixing that into just a little Pyrex glass container so I can measure everything out. I found putting the water in first and then putting the paint in second helped to make sure that paint didn't settle to the bottom. Then I poured all of that into my little handy paint pail that I'll be using because I can hold it in my hand while I'm up on a step stool. So if you've got to get up high, Get yourself a small step stool that gets you all the way up to any point that you need to reach. Something that's gonna be really critical is you continuously stir your mixture of water and paint. We don't want that paint to settle into the bottom of your container, whatever container you, you, may, you may be using. I find this very easy to use um, because I can literally put my hand through the handle and just I don't have to actually hold on to it. I can just balance it on my hand. But while you're applying your marble, marble veining, make sure you keep that paint and water nice and stirred before you apply anything. So a lot of this is gonna be working very, very quickly. I've got a little apron on, so I've got my different brushes. The other thing you're gonna need are lint-free rags. I got these in a bag from Lowe's. They're very like t-shirt quality material to offload your turkey feather onto and also your brushes to wipe them clean so you don't keep redepositing paint. The other thing you're gonna do is protect any areas that you don't want to get paint on that are in your shower. I'm protecting my shower floor completely and also the walls. So um, a plastic drop cloth you can put into the bottom of your shower floor. And then last but not least, you need to be able to tape everything down so it's nice and secure. So you can see I've made some progress. I'm letting the turkey feather do the talking. That the turkey feather kind of guides where you're gonna go and where that next vein goes. Now, I'm being very mindful to work in 45 degree angles because that's really when you are shearing a piece of marble out of the side of a mountain. It is coming in at 45 degree angles. Now, every once in a while, there's fissures that connect the marble. So I'm making sure that it's not just like 45 degree, 45 degree, 45 degree, that every once in a while, on some of them, I'll connect them because they're friends, right? So I'm gonna work my way up, down, and sideways. So I'm gonna leave this back panel as my last section because I will have perfected the technique. Plus, I'm gonna have to be mindful of the way the two walls are joining this back wall so I can connect everything. So that's the order of business. I'm doing this wall, that wall where I could, I did some of the upper part. I'll probably do that very last just to connect everything with this back panel. Then I'm gonna start at the top, work my way down and across. And when I work across, I'll go ahead and do some more filming. All right, I'll see you again. So what's really important is you can see here, I'm using the turkey feather to go ahead and connect that right wall to the back wall. So look for some of those natural little fissures that the turkey feather creates. And don't feel like you have to make everything a solid line. You can do small little thin lines. Also, I found that, you know, not only 
using the tip of the turkey feather, but also laying it down, created just some interesting little components that I could work off of with my turkey feather. If I wanted to do a heavier section, you can see I'm kind of dragging it and rolling my turkey feather over. And then you can always fill those in later. Okay, here is the progression. And basically what I've done is I'm making those veins look a little bit bigger and I'm using my brush to tap in the paint to fill it in so it's not just a bunch of little individual lines but also some thicker, heavier marbling. I keep working my turkey feather over and over and then just pouncing with my brush just to fill it all in. Make sure you always stand back and look at what you're doing so you like the look before you move forward. Now I'm working on the left side. So I found that I just wanted to make those general connections between the right and the left, at least have one vein running at that 45 degree angle just to give me a baseline. So I knew how to be able to keep working and then fill those marble veins in in between. So I'm doing this really big heavy one in the middle just to offset everything else. So I ended up stopping and looking to see where that next break was on the right hand wall. So I'm working from the opposite side, bringing my turkey feather back into that vein. I found that to be the easiest solution for connecting everything instead of continuing my line all the way, just running left to right. Here, I'm just kind of wiping off a little bit of the glaze. I felt like it got a little heavy. So don't be scared to manipulate the glaze and create different widths of veining all along between the two 45 degree angles. We're going to let our marble veins dry overnight to make sure they're good and secure before we apply the final layer of glaze. Good morning! You know, I always say good morning when I want you to let stuff dry overnight or at least 12 hours. When you went and looked at your bathroom this morning, were you like, wow, I can't believe I did that? That's exactly how I felt and was just really happy because it mimics my inspiration shower that I wanted to create the marbling effect for. So you might've done something a little bit smaller than I did, but I was looking for bold and dramatic and that's exactly what I got. Now, when you start looking up close, now that the paint has dried, you can see it's a little too stark and why we are gonna have to put another glaze over the top. Fortunately, this glazing is gonna go so much faster than actually drawing on all of the marble veining because literally we are gonna be brushing on a glaze and just patting it back off. So the ratio I ended up doing for the glaze, using the same porch and floor paint that we use for the shower, the same exact white, what was left in the can after completing three coats of paint on the shower, I used a 25 to 75% ratio. So 25% paint to 75% water. So I ended up doing about a cup of paint, maybe a little bit more, two, three cups of water. Then I divided those two in half. I put part of it in my handy paint pail and then I kept the other half for later just in case I need more. So I would say make more than you think you need because we are doing a full shower. That glaze is gonna go a long way, but you may wanna apply a second coat. So it's always good to have two batches and I'll insert some film footage of all of this so you can see exactly what the mixture looks like and what the consistency should be. Now let's talk about supplies. So you are gonna need the widest foam brush you can possibly buy. This was the widest I found at Lowe's. It's four inches. Make sure you clean it off. You're definitely gonna be needing gloves. This is gonna get kind of messy, but it's gonna go fast. And then I would like you to find an old white t-shirt that you cut up into nice rags. This is an old Valspar t-shirt. Um, if you don't have any old t-shirts, go ask one of your friends or go to Goodwill and buy one. But you definitely are going to need lots of white rags. I don't recommend using any uh, anything other than a white cotton, okay? And let me think, is there anything else? So you need your mix, you need your stir stick, you got to keep stirring your glaze. 
and um, you're pale and we're just gonna go ahead and get to it. So it's the same situation as yesterday where it's gonna be really hard for me to film up top. So once I get lower, I will go ahead and film some more up close shots of exactly what I'm doing. And this time I can talk to you a little bit while I'm actually doing the application versus when I was having to stare at the wall and do the marbling and the voiceover. So I'm gonna get to glazing and we're gonna set these marble veins back and it's gonna look so spectacular. So I thought I'd pop in and let you know how it's going and it's going so fast and so easy, you're gonna be really surprised. So I'm gonna show you my technique right here where the door is open so you can see it a little bit better, but hopefully on camera you can pick up I have washed this side. I have not washed this side. And you can kind of see how it softens everything. I have decided, and I have plenty of glaze left, that I'm going to apply two coats of glaze because what ends up happening is you pull off some of that glaze with your rag and I want to soften it even further. So you can apply your glaze in multiple stages. I would always err on the side of too light and you can build on top. Once you go too dark, it's almost impossible to pull it back off. So anyway, I'll jump in my shower <laughs> and show you exactly what I'm doing. So what I found to have helpful was just one of the regular rags. This is not what we're blotting any of the glaze with, but just to have this because once you dip this into your cup of glaze, it does drip quite a bit. The other thing is, I felt like um, I could do, I did these two walls, I'm trying to think, and I ended up switching. You'll see your foam brush starting to break down. And so once you start seeing little particles, I want you to go ahead and switch into a new foam brush. So this is a newer foam brush that I, I really picked up like right here with, okay? So, sorry, I'm gonna cut out me bending down, but I gotta bend down and get some glaze. So always make sure your paint, your glaze are mixed up before you dip your foam brush. Just, I'm continuously stirring it. So I'm gonna start right here, because this is where I left off. And I'm actually just doing an up and down brushing motion. And this was really dark and heavy, so I'm gonna go over that. And you'll feel when your foam brush starts running on glaze. So I'm gonna go down all the way to the bottom and then I'm gonna work my way back up, overlapping where I just was. You can see it changing. So you can see I'm coating the whole surface and what we wanna do is eliminate those brush marks. So we're gonna take our little t-shirt rag and make a pad out of it. So we're not adding any more texture and then we're just gonna pounce over these areas just to blend it in and get rid of that streakiness. So I'm literally just tapping over the veining itself and not everywhere. Unless I see drips, then I, I gently pat those in. Okay, so I'm just blending this in. Flip it over when you feel like you have too much glaze. And that's really just about it. It goes really fast. Um, you can keep layering on the glaze a lot longer. You let your glaze sit there before you actually start patting some of it off, the more it will dry a little bit and sink into your veining. Uh, but that's why it's kind of good to just do two layers. This is super easy. I would recommend doing two layers. What I'm finding as hard is I wish I had four hands, <laughs> but that's why I've been leaving my rag kind of propping down here. If you get any glaze anywhere on your shower head or on your faucet itself, you can clean that off later with baby wipes or a wet paper towel, it's gonna come right off. Now, in the grout lines, make sure you use your brush to tap into those grout lines. So it's good to stay within a section of tiles so you don't forget where you were. The other thing is none of the glaze is being pulled off during this process because it's good and dry because we let it dry overnight. So now I'm gonna pat where I just applied, just to get rid of that streakiness. Trying not to take too much off or add any more texture. So again, anywhere you see drips, go ahead and pat. So you can see how I'm blending that in very gently. And hopefully now you can really see a big difference between this section and that section and that section. So once you finish glazing, the next steps are 
you are going to let your shower dry just like we did before when we painted it we're going to let it dry three days and that's really critical to make sure this glaze is nice and dry there is no clear coat needed over the top of this it's going to be just as durable as the portion floor paint that we originally applied i actually tested this out and we are good to go one of the reasons and benefits that I don't want to clear coat and don't want you to clear coat is if we ever have to touch this up, we literally can put a coat of paint and do this all over again without ever having to add another primer or anything. We just would have to clean it really well and go ahead and paint. Back to glazing. Have fun. Play some good music. All right, once you finish glazing, it's time to clean up. You likely dripped a lot of glaze down into the plastic or around the edges of your shower or your tub. Make sure you wipe all that up so it doesn't flick back up onto the walls or drip through your house. Also, very gently remove your tape, pull it back, and roll everything into itself. And ta-da! You are done with the glazing stage and now it's time to dry. So we are going to let our paint dry for three days before light use. It really needs about seven days to fully set and settle in and get a little bit harder. So I would just baby your shower and be really, really careful. You can see that I've installed a new shower head. I did that after three days. So if you're going to make any modifications like that where water may hit the shower, please wait to do that. Cleaning. Cleaning is really important, obviously, in a shower, but I want you to baby your finish, and I don't want you to do any scrubbing ever. Scrubbing with a scrub brush can create micro wounds, which the water will get behind and eventually deteriorate the finish. That was a hard word for me to say. That will eventually deteriorate the finish, and so you don't want to do that. Please always be gentle and baby your finish. Use a microfiber rag. My plan is to clean this. I'm gonna use Dawn dish detergent, one third, two thirds water and a spray bottle. I'm gonna use that to clean my shower and just to get off soap scum and lift everything off. Every once in a while, if I need to, if I keep up with cleaning, I shouldn't have to, and I need to remove any mold or mildew buildup, then it's okay, again, to do a one-third bleach with two-thirds water, spray that down, let it sit, and wipe it off with a microfiber rag. So we're just going to be really, really gentle, but you can definitely clean your shower without issue. So I really appreciate your time, and I hope to see you in class again soon. If you found this helpful, please subscribe, like, and share with a friend.